already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. And he's blessed us one more again to come and lift up his name. As the choir come, let's join in together and praise God with a rousing praise of worship.
Eternal God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege. God, we thank you for another honor. We got it another great opportunity just to come before you one more time, just to praise your name, to thank you for who you are and for what you do. You are our great God. You are our great King. There is none like you. And we come to lift you up this morning. We come to praise you for your name. We come to bless you for what you do. We come to honor you today. And we've come to this place to hear from you. Now, Lord, we pray, Father God, that you forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. We ask you to bless us to hear clearly from you today. Bless us as we come to sing your songs. Bless us as we come to lift up your name. Bless us as we come to hear your word. Lord, I ask you to rescue me from me. Hide me behind Jesus the Christ. That old habits will be thrown away. Old burdens will be rolled away. That we will be better at 12 o'clock than we were at 10 o'clock. That life, Father God, as we know it, will be for the better. We ask you, God, to manifest yourself in this room. Lord, have your way in the room. Lord, we ask you to touch by the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the honor. We'll be careful to give you the glory. We will be careful, Father God, to lift up the name of Jesus. That men, women, boys, and girls will come running and asking the question. What must I do to be saved? Lord, we thank you now. Lord, we glorify you now. We thank you for the victory. We honor you for the glory. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for you are worthy. It's in the precious, powerful name of your son, Jesus the Christ who died on Calvary. It's in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ who got up early that third day morning. It's in his name we come, and we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. It's our God.
Jesus is the way, and there is none like him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending today and, and adding numbers to the house. Amen. Amen. We're celebrating 79 years that God has shown one brother that he's still good. And we are so glad about God and how God does things and what God does on our behalf. He is the only true and righteous God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We serve the awesome God. In case you didn't know, the God we serve is simply amazing. There is none like Him. He is God. He wasn't made God. He just is God. He wasn't God. He just is God. He has three personalities. He appears in three persons. But he's still God. And that's the God we've come to lift up today. The God of the Bible. Who keeps us. Just in case you didn't know, he woke you up this morning. Just in case you may have forgotten, it's the God that, that touched you with the divine, divine finger of love. It wasn't honey nudging you. It wasn't your alarm clock nor your phone that woke you up this morning. It was God Almighty, God himself. He has, he has blessed us one more again. And if you're not, for that, I'm thankful. Are you thankful today that he's put most of us in our right mind? Most of us dressed ourselves this morning because he is the almighty, almighty God. He is God all by himself. Let me call your attention to the book of Acts, chapter 5. Verses 29 through 32. The book of Acts chapter 5. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Verses 29 through 32. When you found it, you will discover these words. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted. To his right hand, to priest and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. I want to talk about we must obey God. We must obey God. Everybody in this room, including the baby, 
gives us a chance to make choices. Many times I believe babies make more choices than grown folks. They have choices to make every day. They have indications that they can make their own choices. If you don't believe me, just ask the baby. The baby will say yes when it's time to say yes, according to them. The baby will say no whenever the baby wants to say no. God has given us what is known as a free moral agency. And that free moral agency is to make choices. Somebody chose to make it here this morning, and I'm glad you did. Somebody chose to not make it this morning. It's kind of ironic to me that sometimes when things are going on, we can make all those things. But when it comes to Sunday morning, headaches kick in. Belly aches begin to take place. Cramps come up in the side and the leg. It's because we are able to make choices and it depends on which side of the aisle we are on makes a difference of what choice we make. I want to make clear that I'm not talking about which side of the aisle of Democrat or Republic because they both are messed up. <laughs> One of them can't even keep a leader. So we have to get to a point in our lives where we realize that there is right and wrong. Where there is an opportunity for us to make choices every single day. In the book of Acts, you will see throughout the book that there are choices that the apostles had to make. And they had to make it because of their convictions. And they didn't have a long time to make that decision. It is, it is what you practice. It is your convictions. It is what you believe in. It is how you believe and what you have been taught to believe. I oftentimes say the devil should have killed me while he had me. Well. But now he has given me an opportunity. And now I'm on the Lord's side. And the devil in hell cannot convince me that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus didn't die. The devil can't convince me that over 2,000 years ago, they buried him in a borrowed tomb. The devil can't distract my attention from the statement that, that Jesus got up early that third day morning, and because he got up, then I can get up. My convictions today is that Jesus yet lived. And because Jesus lived, I live. Not only does Jesus live, he lives in me. And because I believe he lives in me, the scripture is right that all things that I attempt, I can do it through Christ Jesus. I have to watch my motives. I have to watch my attitude. I have to be careful how I carry myself. Because at the end of the day, God has the last. In the Bible, in, in Acts chapters 1 through 4, you find the church at her birth being the church at her best. I mean, that church was moving and the Holy Spirit was moving in such a way that it is a demonstration of what God can do and what God will do and now what God has done. Jesus speaks in Acts chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, and he talks about the fact that we have now have power after the Holy Spirit has come upon us, and now we should be witnesses. That one statement has landed the apostles in trouble. Jesus says, go and be witnesses. Go and tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ. And this good news that Jesus Christ has presented to us, this good news will save souls. And the disciples have the audacity, the gall, the guts to go and tell men, and women, boys and girls about a man named Jesus. My question to you this morning, do you have the guts? Do you have the gall? Do you have the intestines to, to go 
and tell somebody about a man named Jesus that gave his life on a skull hill called Calvary. We move throughout the text. We find there was a lame man in chapter 4. And this lame man was sitting and he was begging for money. And when he was begging for money, he, he didn't need some change in his cup. He needed a change on the inside. Peter and John, on their way up the temple, said to this man, I don't have what you're asking for. Silver and gold, I have none. But what I do do, I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. The Bible records that this man got up and he walked and he went into the church house leaping and he was jumping and he was shouting until the religious folk got sad. Let me just tell you today, everybody, Ain't glad when you're doing good. Sometimes they love when you're thumbing a ride. Sometimes they're excited when they can help you get from point A to point B. Sometimes people get glad when you're down and out and you have to come to them for something because it make them feel like they are somebody. Even the church folk. In the text, not at the New Beginning Church, in the text, the church folk didn't want to see this man healed of God. And so they tried to shut the disciples down. They put him in prison. When you move to chapter 5, when you move to chapter 5, you will find out that, first of all, there was Ananias and Sapphira. Somebody said, there he goes. There was Ananias and Sapphira. And Ananias and Sapphira, the idea was you sell your land and you bring the rest of it to the church. You bring all of it to the church. Peter is standing in the church and Ananias and Sapphira shows up. First of all, uh, uh, Ananias shows up. Now it was his land. He didn't have to sell it and he didn't have to give the money to the church. He sold it and he kept back some. He didn't have to lie about it. It belongs to him. But he showed up, and when he showed up, he said, this is all I got for this land, and he gave it to the preacher. The preacher said, you really, really? Is this really all you got? Is this all that you paid? they paid you for this land? He said, this is all. The Bible says instantly, Ananias dropped dead in the church. Peter went on to tell the story, and Peter says, you don't lie to us. You lie to the Holy Spirit. Ananias drops dead in the church. You can, you can read it, you can read it on, in your spare time, verses 1 through 11. Ananias drops dead, and then Miss Sapphire, Miss Ananias, Miss, Miss Sapphire walks in. And when she walks in, she comes and she gives her offering to the preacher. And when she gives her offering, he asks her the same question. Is this what you receive from the land? Now remember, that's their land. They can sell it for what they want to sell it. They, they don't have to bring it to the church. Just admit what you did. And, and it reminds me of the modern day Christians. Sometimes you don't have to ask for a lot. They just bring it to you. I'm minding my own business. I'm not, I'm not even asking anybody anything. And, and, and they just, just bring me a pastor. You know, I'm like, I'm saying like, really? So she shows up and because she and her husband has conspired, they have conspired and they have gotten together, they have decided that we're going to tell them this. And when they got to church, they told them this. After Ananias drops dead, the strong men, the Bible says the young men, carried him outside and buried him. When Sapphira walks in, she says, yeah, this is all of it. And the preacher reminds her that the same men that carried your husband out is just outside the door. Now you did, you really want to tell the truth. She said, no, this is it. And she dropped dead. And the Bible says the young men carried her out. The lesson is, don't lie, don't lie to the Holy Spirit. Right. Don't lie. And see, some people think that they're lying to the man of God. Peter makes it clear that you're lying to the Holy Spirit. We get to verses number 
12 through 16, the power of the church is moving in such a way until believers are increasing by the thousands. People are turning to Jesus Christ because they believe in the story. And don't you know, again, the, the religious folks get upset because people are coming to the Lord. My next point to you is, even when you're coming to the Lord, people are not happy. They always want to remind you of who you used to be. I remember when you were doing bad. They don't want to encourage you to do good. They don't want to tell you how good you're doing. They want to remind you of how bad you're doing so they can keep their thumbs on you and even put their knee on you simply because it makes them look big when you look down. Bible says, the Bible says that the religious folk got upset. And then when you move to verses 17, through 21, you will find the religious folk got so upset till they put him in prison. They locked up the preacher. They locked up the preacher for preaching the word. They locked up the preachers for delivering the message. I want to say to you today, if you're going to go to jail, at least go for righteousness. I, I want to be a testimony today and tell you that I, I oftentimes tell my wife and my daughter, look, huh? I will take a bullet for you. I will die for you. But I'm not going to jail for you. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to go to jail for you. Watch yourself. Do the right thing. And don't try to solve the problem on the side of the road. We can solve it in court. Just make it home safely. Let me tell you, I'm not going to jail for anybody. The last time I went by there, I testify. The last two times I went by there, they gave me some peanut butter sandwiches that were smashed together. Somebody said, the preacher been in jail. Oh my God. Lord have mercy. I wonder what he was in for. I wonder why he went. Come on back in here. Come on, come on back with me. I mean, they gave me some peanut butter sandwich that was sandwiches that were smashed together and they were the bread was stale. The peanut butter was old. I said, no, no, no more of this. Guys got to fighting while I was in there. One guy walks in and he had been locked up so many times. Brother Johnson, the guy was sitting on the bench. He said, get up. This is my seat. <laughs> he, was, he was a common one. He was used to it. He, he got locked up on a regular. He had a rap sheet this long and they had started on another. I'm telling you, I don't want to go to jail for anybody. They locked the preachers up for telling the word of God. They locked them up for witnessing for Jesus Christ. They got out. Once they got out, the Bible says they went back to the church and they witnessing about Jesus in the temple. Now the governmental officials get involved. And they are upset. He said they got the nerve to go down to the synagogue, go down to the church, and now they're doing just what we told them not to do. We asked them to not talk about the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, the reason why people don't want you to talk about the name of Jesus is because the name of Jesus is powerful. The name of Jesus gives us hope. The name of Jesus gives us strength. The name of Jesus changes our lives. They don't want you to talk about Jesus. On your job, you can talk about Buddha all day. You can talk about Muhammad all day. On your job, you can talk about politics all day. On your job, you can talk about racism all day. But when you mention the name of Jesus, they don't want you to talk about the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus soothes our heart. It is Jesus' name. Might as well tell this story again. They called me in Fort Bend County to pray at a school event. They wanted me to pray. I asked them the question, do I pray or you want me to pray? And they said, yeah, we want you to pray. I said, well, why do you want me to pray? Because we think you can get a prayer through. I said, you think that I can get a prayer through? Yeah, we want you to pray. But we don't want you to pray in the name of Jesus. I asked again, do you really want me to pray? They said, yeah, we want you to pray. I said, now you came across the room to ask me to pray, and you really want me to pray, but you don't want me to pray in the name of Jesus. 
Now, we don't want you to pray in the name of Jesus. I said, but you do want me to pray, right? He said, yeah, we want you to pray, but we don't want you to pray in the name of Jesus. Well, Brother Miles, I knew this was my last time anyway. I, I, I just knew it was my last time, and I figured if I get started, they wouldn't stop me. So when I began to pray, Brother Carl, I said, Lord, here I come now. In the precious, powerful, anointed name of Jesus of Christ. Lord, here I come now in the name of Jesus, the one who died on Calvary. Lord, here I come in the name of Jesus with head bowed. Lord, I come in the name of Jesus, the one they murdered, the one they killed on a skull hill called Calvary. Lord, I come in the name of Jesus, the one who rose early that third day morning. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you protect these students in Jesus' name. I hadn't gotten another call <laughs> ever since. It's simply because the name of Jesus scares people. The name of Jesus causes us to prosper. The name of Jesus set our budgets straight. The name of Jesus gives us organiza organism and organization in our spirit. The name of Jesus put our minds right. That's why the senior saints used to say, God, regulate my mind. And he, they say, regulate my heart. It's because the name of Jesus can set us at one again. Such so it is in the text. In the text, they say, now don't you talk about Jesus anymore. And so then they come again and they take him to trial. When they took him to trial this time, they said, now we untold you. Don't preach, don't teach, don't witness in the name of Jesus. I mean, prison would have been enough for somebody. <laughs> they said, don't witness. They took me to jail. I ain't going back in there, so I'm not going to talk about Jesus. These brothers left jail, went to church, and started talking about Jesus. The Bible says that the word of God and the doctrine of Jesus Christ began to spread throughout the whole area. Many came to know Jesus. So they kept talking about Jesus. This time, as, we, as you keep reading, you'll find out that Gamaliel speaks up. Gamaliel was a doctor of the law. He knew the word. Gamaliel gives two examples. And he said there were two guys one time, and they started a movement, and their movement died off. He says one of them died, and the movement shuts down. Let me just say to you, if your family movement, if your church movement, if your goal shut down when you die, you haven't done a good job of passing on from one generation to the other what you're all about. Gamaliel says these two guys were leading and when they separated themselves or when God separated them, their movement shut down. And then he says, if this thing that these apostles are doing if it's not of God, it's going to come to naught. It's going to shut down. It's not going to exist but for a few minutes. You don't have to pressure them. You don't have to lock them up. This movement will shut down. Then Gamaliel says it like this. He says, but if it's of God, you can't stop it. If it's of God, you need to leave these men alone because if it's of God, this thing is going to keep moving and it's not going to be moving because you allow it to move. It's going to keep moving simply because God is behind it. I want to tell you today, whatever God ordains will happen. Whatever God says is going to happen. Whatever God does is going to take place. Whatever God is in the midst of, God is able to bless it. One of these days, I'm going to leave here. One of these days, they're going to they gonna fold my hand in service for the very last time. One of these days, my tongue will cleave to the roof of my mouth. One of these days, they're going to spread me out across the altar or they're going to put me in a field. Whatever y'all choose to do is all right with me because I'm going up yonder. One of these days when I, I have spoke my last word, folk going to cry for a minute, Brother Urban, and they're going to go eat fried chicken and forget I even exist. But the good thing about it is God is able to take us home from here. 
it's on God. It's, on, it's all about God. It's God's timing. It's, it's God's movement. And the thing about God, he moves. And when he moves, we ought to move just like he moves. You look at the text. The text declares that even the high priest asked them, saying, didn't we tell you to stop teaching and stop preaching and stop witnessing in the name of Jesus? We don't even want to hear this name anymore. I'm afraid that in these great United States of America, we have generations upon generations that don't want to hear the name Jesus. It's a sad day when those who, who parents and grandparents grew up in Sunday school, and now we got children that don't want any part of Jesus, don't want you to talk to them about Jesus, because something happened in their lives. Let me tell you, baby, if you're going through right now, just hold on for a minute. God knows how to bless you, and God can keep you. Don't turn your back on God. Don't leave God. Don't separate yourself from God. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. You better stay with God, because God is going to keep you. You can be a millionaire or wealthy now. I don't know how that translates, but you can be poor or rich. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what your 401k or your 403b looks like. It doesn't matter how long you have money or how, whether it's old money or new money. It does not matter. It doesn't matter what house you live in. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't matter who your mate is because when we leave here, we will have no more mates. Senior saints say every tub must sit on his own bottom. Everybody got to know Jesus for themselves. It doesn't matter if your daddy was the chairman of deacon. It doesn't matter if your, your granddaddy was the pastor of the church. Every tub must sit on his own bottom and we must make our own choices simply because Jesus is an individual God. He gave his life for individuals and at the same time he died one time for all. He died for all of us. So whatever you're going through, whatever your troubles are, don't run from God. Don't leave him. It's tragic. It's tragic that there are members of the New Beginning Church that I only see during the funeral time. I told you before that God, the devil, and COVID-19 are the three most lied on beings in this world. Some would say God told me to do it. Others would say the devil made me do it. And COVID has gotten me to the point where I can't do it. Ah, they do everything else, but they can't make it to the house of the Lord. But whenever a funeral takes place, I get to see all of the New Beginning Church members. Oh, what a family reunion. If I could see them every Sunday, every Wednesday, it would be a great time. But you hear stuff like, I don't do organized religion. I have to tell them that Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with the almighty God. Christianity is not a movement. It is a relationship with the almighty God. And the Bible teaches us that God is working all around us. And because God is at work all around us, he is keeping us in mind. God got you in mind. God knows what you're going to do before you do it. God knows when you promised him that you were going to keep the faith, he knew whether you were lying then. And we sneak in the dark as if God doesn't see us. Don't worry about the preacher. Don't worry about the mission sisters. God sees you. In the old church, they used to make people come up and confess their sins. The problem with that is the people who you are confessing to are sinful too. The guy who's standing before you has sin also. So why would I confess my sin to you when I got Jesus that is sitting on the right hand of the Father and as I confess my sin to him, he has a hotline to God and he begins to plead my case on my behalf. Folk want you to confess your sins before the church so they can know your business. And now we got X. Instagram. We, we have email. We, I mean, before you leave your seat, baby, before it can come completely out your mouth, the whole world can know what's going on. It's because they want to know what's going on and they want to know your business. That's why young people cannot depend on how many likes they get. They can't depend on how many shares you get. If you want to share some, share Sunday morning services. 
If you want to share some, pick up your phone and share it with your best friends. Pick up your phone and, and go to your friend's profile and, and share it with them. Pick up your phone and go to instant messaging and instant message them. Because if, you, if they're your friend, you want to help them, right? If they're your friend, you want them to know the Jesus you love, right? If they're your friends, you want to share Jesus with them. The Bible says that the doctrine spread it throughout all of Jerusalem. Jesus' blood saves us. We get to verse number 29. It says, Peter and the other apostles answered and said, they're still answering this question. Didn't we tell you to not speak anymore in the name of Jesus? He said, we ought to obey God. We ought to obey God rather than men. Some versions say man. We ought to obey God rather than men. Let me tell you, stop pleasing people. People will let you down. People will walk out on you at your worst moment. Family and friends will despise you. They will leave. You can't depend on them. And they mean well. I've, I've, I've heard it. I've, I've seen it. I've, I've, I've experienced it. People, I'm going to be with you to the bitter end. And when the bitter came to a start, they got ended. <laughs> I'm going to stick with you through thick and thin. And when the thick got thin, they got gone. I'm, I'm telling you today that, that Peter says... We ought to obey God rather than other men. What he's saying is, we have a government here, and we have God here. Yes, we ought to obey Caesar. Yes, we ought to obey man. We ought to obey the, land, the law of the land. We ought to obey it. But whenever it comes in conflict with what God has said, you got to let him go. Whenever it comes in direct opposition to what God has to say, you got to walk away. You can't get tied up with folk because you want a big name or you want them to look at you a certain way. Let me tell you, when you go back home to your hometown or you go to the community in which you grew up in, they ought to look at you and say, there's something about you that is different. I can't put my hand on it. But you just don't say what you used to say. You don't, don't do what you used to do. You don't act the way you used to act. It's because I have spent time with Jesus. Jesus is able to rearrange our life. He goes on to say that we ought to be, obey God rather than man. Then he gives the reason. God, our, God, the God of our fathers, the God of the Bible, the God of the Israelites, Raise Jesus, whom you murdered, and, and by hanging him on a tree. Sometimes you just got to be bold with it. Just got to come out with it. Sometimes you just got to tell him like it is. Uh, Pastor Rose would say it all the time. If you don't want my fruit, don't shake my tree. In other words, don't ask my opinion if you don't want to hear the truth. Peter and the other apostles said that the God of our fathers has raised up this dead Jesus. And he says that I don't want you to forget the fact y'all killed him, y'all murdered him, y'all killed him by hanging him on a tree. Y'all killed him by hanging him on a tree. And when you murdered him and killed him by hanging him on a tree, verse 31, he says, him that you hung on a tree, him that you killed. Him that you put in a borrowed tomb, him, God exalted him. There's a point here that you need to understand that when folk press you down, God can lift you up. When folk just get off on your nerves, God can set you straight. When people get down on you, when people even lie on you, God has a way of blessing you. And the Bible says that he prepares a table for you right in the presence of your enemies. What that translate is, when he prepares a table for you, you ought to put on your long flowing gown. You ought to put on your long flowing dress. Put on your best suit and your necktie. Put on your bow tie, whatever you wear, because you got a banquet to go to because God says he will prepare a table. That table is not just one table. It's a whole banquet and all of your enemies will watch you as God lifts you. 
Have, have, you ever, have you ever been there before? Have you ever been there where people, they don't want you to be promoted, they don't want you to buy a new car, and when they see you with something that, that they don't have or something that, that advances your focus, advances your purpose, they say, well, everybody can't do it. Let me tell you how to follow it up. You right. Everybody can't do it. Everybody ain't doing it because God is the one that makes it happen. Always give the credit to who God is. He says, him who you all killed, you all murdered by hanging them on the tree, God has highly exalted him. Paul says in Philippians, he says, God has highly exalted him. In Philippians chapter 2, he says, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. This week's episodes, All right. th this week's episode would cause most of us to buy down. This week's episode would call most of us to go to God in prayer. Right. Well, there's an a AI-generated cartoon right there. I says AI-generated of a man that went through some trauma this week. And they show him bowing down to pray. The problem with that AI cartoon, number one, is a false one because he's not bowing down. And the reason why you know it's AI generated or, or some kind of manipulated picture, he got six fingers on both hands. <laughs> the man with the little bitty hands got six fingers on both hands. And what people will do, they will send you uh, imitations, they will send you fakes and make you think that they are of God when they're all the time doing the songwriter, what the songwriter back home would say, uh, they will be backstabbers. Backstabbers, backstabbers. They, they are looking for another way to come at you another way. When President Obama was, was in office, there were people wearing t-shirts that, that sent them to a passage of scripture. And some so-called Christians, they read the t-shirt and it says, pray for your president. And then they quoted the scripture. So without Christians going to the Bible, they bowing down all over the place, praying this scripture over President Obama. But you ought to at least go to the Bible and see what the scripture says. And what the scripture was saying is, Lord, make his wife a widow. Make his children an offering. Offerings. And because I want you to make his wife a widow and his children an offering, what they were saying is, get him killed off. And all these folk, these Christians that go to church, these Christians that go to Sunday school, these Christians that go to Bible study, didn't think enough to pick up the Bible and see what the word of God said. So they praying this over their president. Let me tell you, knowledge is power. And knowledge of the word of God is power on steroids. When you have the word of God, no one can take it from you. you can, the good thing about God, you don't even have to say it out loud. He knows what you're thinking. When, when you read the word, you ought to pray over the word, and you ought to pray the word. When you pray over the word, you say, Lord, speak to me by way of your word. Tell me what you're saying in your word. Lord, bless me to understand your word. And when you're praying the word, you're reminding God what God, as if he needs to be reminded, you're reminding God, or calling to God's attention what God has already said. And you say stuff like this, God, you said that I would be the head and not the tail. Lord, your word says that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to your purpose. Lord, your word says that I'm going to be blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed going in and blessed going out. Lord, your word says that I'm going to make it when no one else can make it. Amen. Now, there are some people in this room, understand, it doesn't matter what the economy does, we're going to make it. It doesn't matter how tough things get. God has prepared us to make it. When others can't make it, God has prepared the Christian to make it without all that shenanigan. We don't have to go and steal, kill. We don't have to go and negotiate anything. God negotiates it for us. And God prepares a table before our enemies. And God blesses us even when we're not all the way right.
Have you ever been like me? Not all the way right now. Have you ever been just like me that mess up every now and then? Have, have you ever been at a point like me? Now, some preachers not going to tell you because they, they just dropped down out of the clouds. But I just want to tell you, there are times when I think the wrong thing. There are times when I say the wrong thing. There are times when I do the wrong thing. And I have to run to Jesus just like you do. I have to go according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, and say, Lord, here I am again. But your word says, Lord, you are faithful and you are just. To wipe me up, to cleanse me up, to forgive me from all unrighteousness. Who wouldn't have a God like that? Who wouldn't love on the Lord like that? He says that God has made him the prince. The word prince means that he's the chief leader. He's the captain. God has made him the savior. He is the deliverer. He's the one who saves our soul. To give repentance to all of Israel, not just Israel, to all of us, and for the forgiveness of our sin. God alone forgives us. And he does it through his son. He does it through his son. Whenever we came off the baseball field and we went to my dad and mama's house and uh, all of the whole team showed up, they couldn't go in the house unless I went in the house. They would crowd around the stove like it's their mama's stove. But they couldn't go around the stove unless I came in the house. I came to tell you today, if you're going to call on God, you can't call on him any old kind of way. You got to call on him by the name of Jesus. And when Jesus opens the door, then you can get a prayer through. You can't even get your own prayer through without Jesus. Finally, verse number 32, and I'll leave you alone. And we are his witnesses to all these things. We are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to all those who obey him. The question on the table today is, will you obey God or will you obey men? Will you focus more on God than you focus on men? Men give pink ships and God give new jobs. Men, men shut down your car and they will, they will turn it off, but God gives you more. Men will, will deny your pay increase, but God will give you more abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Men have a way of getting beside themselves. When they get a dime over a dollar, they get beside themselves. When they get saved, they look down at you. I say to you, if somebody walks in with it too low, too high, and too tight, leave them alone. Let God deal with them. Simply because God is able to make you. Because God dealt with you longer than you needed. he needed to deal with you. Anybody here witness like I am? Anybody here can say that you ain't got it all together, you don't have it right, and every now and then you have to go to God and say, God, fix me. God, mold me. God, here I am again. Lord, I messed up again. Lord, I fell in the same ditch again. Lord, I promised you last time I wouldn't do it anymore, but here I am again, Lord. I'm asking for your mercy. I'm asking you for your grace because there is no one like you, God. Please give me mercy. And Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father, he said, Lord, give them another chance. Lord, bless them. Lord, keep them. We can't walk away from Jesus. We can't leave Jesus alone because Jesus makes a way out of no way. When our children get sick, we pray to Jesus. When our house note is messed up, we pray to Jesus. When we got more month than we have money, we pray to Jesus. When Jesus is in the neighborhood, I don't mind him blessing my next door neighbor. I don't mind him blessing the folk down the street. It's evident that Jesus is in the neighborhood, and it's just a matter of time that he comes right by. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That same Jesus makes a way out of no way. He did it over 2,000 years ago. Jesus the Christ died on Calvary. The book says that they murdered him. The book says they killed him. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. And when they hung him on the tree, he died, I tell you. He was all the way dead. He died. They took him off the tree. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it so long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And that same Jesus, he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. 
Anybody here today going to trust Jesus? Anybody here today going to walk with Jesus? Anybody here today is going to leave men behind for the sake of Jesus? The Bible says that he gives us forgiveness. He gives us hope. He gives us strength. The same Jesus left here on a cloud. He's sitting on the right hand of God the Father. He's interceding for us. God that knucklehead done messed up again. Forgive him again. Set him at straight one more time. God, make life good for him one more time. Lord, give him another chance. Lord, he, he, he mean to do what's right. But Jesus is just interceding for us. He's making a way out of no way for us. Same Jesus that's sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. One of these days, he's going to crack the sky at the trump of God with a cry, with a shout. And don't worry about your loved ones who died in Christ. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18, he says one of these days at the trump of God the dead in Christ shall rise first. The archangel, you will let, he will let out a shout and, and, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. Let me, let me just tell you, if you don't like church down here, you better get used to it. <laughs> if you're saved, if you're born again, if you're going to heaven, if you don't like church down here, over yonder, we're going to celebrate all day. The Bible says there'll be no night. Because the sun is setting the city in bright light. Not the S-U-N, the S-O-N, the Son of God, will give us light. And when we get over yonder, we're going to really celebrate. Some people say, I want to see my mama. I want to see my grandparents. I want to see Moses. I want to see Adam and Eve. I just want to tell you, I want to see Jesus. The, the one who, who died for me. The one who sacrificed for me. The one who makes a way out of no way for me. I want to see Jesus. The Bible says when he cracks the sky, we're going to be like him. That little nasty attitude you got, you got to let that go. And some of us know how to roll out there. Shake our head, book our eyes, and tell you where to go. But the Bible says we will be just like Him. Amen. If you want to go to heaven when you die, the door of the church is open. Amen. You're going to have to try Jesus. Amen. The door is open. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. You can get to know Him today. If you never tried Jesus, you need to try him. He gets sweeter and sweeter every second. This is not an invitation to join the church yet. This invitation is so that you can get yourself right with God. Why not try Jesus? You tried her, she let you down. You tried him, he walked away. You tried them, they left you alone. And most of us have tried it. And it didn't fulfill us. It's time to try Jesus. The righteous Lamb of God. If you've never tried Him, would you just bow your head with me? And invite Him into your life right now. Just repeat this simple prayer after me. And invite the Lord Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. 
I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, trusting in the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you are saved, you're on your way to heaven. You can leave here, it doesn't matter how I leave now. When I leave here, I will open my eyes in heaven. Now if you are looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. You can be a global member, meaning you don't have to be local, or you can be a local member and be a part of the New Beginning Church. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Will you come? The door is open. Trust him. We gotta obey God and not man. Trust him. Trust him. I want to thank God for who He is and what He's already done. We serve the awesome. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He has blessed us one more time. He has blessed us again. And we are, we are thankful. We are thankful that God has done what God does. And he has done it well. It is offering time. It is tough time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way up in the air and someone will serve you. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way in the air and you will be served.
find a way. If you're bringing your offering, come on up. If you bring an offering, we have we have time to wait. Amen. Amen. Come on up. You bring in your offering. Come on up. We don't wait on you. Because everybody knew, did everybody know what we were doing? All right, just check it, just check it, just check it. Everybody knew what we were doing. If you're still writing or still sending, just say, wait, we're going to wait on you. Amen. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Father, for these gifts. We ask the bless every giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. Good morning. I'm here with your announcements. June birthdays this month. We have Andrew Johnson on the 1st, Michael Irvin on the 8th, Lula Richard on the 10th, Carolyn Davis on the 15th, Anthony Wong on the 17th, Anna Garza on the 18th, Sophia Galvan on the 19th, Blanca Galvan on the 24th, and Jonathan Servant on the 26th. Upcoming events. Music classes at NBC. Music classes are offered on Friday nights from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. and on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock a.m. Please see Sister Carolyn Davis for more information. Bible Listening and Journaling for 2024. We are listening to the New Testament and studying our weekly Sunday school lessons. Tomorrow we start week 23, Acts 22 through 26. Please continue to listen and study God's word. We will celebrate all graduates from pre-K through college on Sunday, June 30th during the morning service. Each graduate should submit his or her name and a photo to Sister Carolyn Davis by June 16th. Please remember those on our prayer list. Renita Weber and Children, Alvin Powell, Zolly Scales Apartment, Coral Woods, Angela Presley, Larry Woods, Lula Richard, Marlene Studevant, Tommy Hemingway Jr., Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Herman Guillory, Nathan Garrett, Chad Warner, Beverly Wallace, Terry Lewis, Doris Bridgeforth, Brandon Turner, Aria Carey Spencer, Mallory Williams, Vivian Islaw, Paula Hornsby, Ed Brennan and family, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Sarante Miller, Leverage for the Harvest and World Peace. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we come now concerning those who are on our prayer list. We ask you to bless, touch, heal, deliver, Father God. Give them the desires of their hearts. Lord, your word teaches us, Father God, that you're the great physician. You're the one who heals us. You're the one who blesses us. Lord, we ask you to bless that we will rejoice and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen. Amen, Kevin. Amen. Amen. Sister Nicole Davis and Brother Haynes, they are coming this way. Sister Nicole Davis and Brother Haynes, they are coming. They are coming this way. Amen. Bonus dad, James Haynes. He's been here visiting before. This morning we're going to have our grand opening of our library. It is. <laughs> 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 
left. It is in memory of my mother and the support that my bonus dad has gave her her entire life. And it's taken us a while to get it together. And once our building has expanded, it will be a standalone, but it's a process. But I want to get us started now. One thing that was very important to her was reading, for children especially. But I think it's just as important for us adults to read and encourage our children to do the same. Through her life, she made a lot of purchases of books. She always bought one for her and five or six to ten for somebody else who she could give it to. And James was always here supporting her, letting her bless people that way. And I wanted him to be here, so that he can see that she's not here, but she's still blessing people in that way. And I have a plaque. Our library is going to be the Mathis Haynes Library and Bookstore. And it says, this project was inspired by an overwhelming desire for everyone to continue to read and educate themselves. I have a plaque inside the library and I want to present this one to James. <laughs> because I know how hard she's worked at this. And Ramona was a, uh, you didn't get to know her, but some of you have. As a very giving person. As a matter of fact, when we were first married, she would give away too many things. <laughs> so you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, a level of generosity that's unparalleled. So I'm not surprised that we have, what, how many books? Over 800 books. And then I even brought 40 when I came from Pennsylvania just a few days ago. So I really do thank the church for what you've done. And I certainly hope that people will take advantage of the opportunity to read these books. And there's some digital stuff, if I'm not mistaken, that's in there as well. So thank you. Thank you. And may God continue to bless and reward this church. And whenever I'm in town, this is where I'll come. And Pastor Davis now knows that I'm, I'm, I'm that person. I'll be here, so it's, I'm not the visitor. And this is like family to me, so thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. God is such an awesome and such an amazing God, and he's right. Uh, when she would come to town, and she would come during the summer right around the the uh, summer enrichment camp. Uh, 
one little boy was playing on the drums, so she borrowed him some drums for his house, a whole set of drums. I'm like, you spoiling these children, because when you go, I'm not going to buy them drums. <laughs> Amen. So she was, she was one who gave on a regular basis. And so today we want to honor her legacy. And one thing about it, our children need to know to read. They, they have to get to a point where they can read. And we want them to start reading while they're in their mother's womb. Uh, I saw a video of a young boy and I posted, he was two years old and he was doing what we call timetables. And he was multiplying and adding, dividing and subtracting. He was two years old. And it's all because number one, God put it in him. Number two, his parents, while he was yet in the womb, they spoke words of affirmation over him. And that's why we have to encourage our children. And many of us can benefit from that. When I grew up, I stuttered so badly. Reading was not first nature for me. So I would get in my separate room and stand in front of the mirror and I would read. And then when it came to studying, I would study in front of the mirror because I knew I couldn't bring an F to the house. And then when I, I needed glasses, uh, Dad would buy me glasses and I could actually see how, how to read and, and my stuttering began to disappear. And every now and then, he had to try to show up in the midst of my conversation and my talking, but it took practice, it took reading, it took enforcement, it kept, we just had to keep reinforcing to our children how important readers become leaders. And we gotta let our children know that they are wonderfully, beautifully made. And great are the handiworks of God. And God has blessed them in spite of where they were raised and in spite of who they were born to, in spite of if somebody's on the scene or not. We have to impress in our children that if anybody else can make it, you can make it. And when others fall out, you can still keep going. We have to be motivators for our children and let them know who they are and what they do. A lot of books in the, in the library are African-American books and Hispanic, Latino books and Anglo books. And everybody needs to know their culture because they're trying to do away with our culture. But our children need to know that things weren't handed to us. And life as you see it today has not always been this way. People died for us to get to where we are. And we need children to see themselves in books and, and make sure that they become authors, they become leaders, and they become government officials. And, and as you know, we need some Christian folk in government. And so therefore, we are trying to expose our children to a lot of things. That's why we're taking them on a mission trip. They're going on domestic missions. Uh, this coming week, we're leaving at 4 a.m. in the morning. 4, 4 a.m. is in the morning. So they have to report to the church at 3 a.m. in the morning. Those who may not be able to make school at 8 o'clock, they got to be here at 3 a.m. on Thursday morning. Thursday, Thursday morning, we are leaving. Yes, sir. There will be no sleeping. This is not vacation. spend the night uh, uh, rent for a hotel at the church is about $200 per night if you go to Houston Harvey it's $400 per night yeah you have you have uh, that's Wednesday night that's Wednesday night Wednesday night um, if we got people who want to spend the night uh, you got to have at least two men here and um, since he's volunteered he'll be one of the men who will come over and and he can bring his frat brothers and they can do a community service. They can do a community service right here at the church. Look how good God is. You see, did you see how he volunteered? God is such an awesome and such a great God. Before I move to our, our mission trip, um, all our visitors who are visiting for the first time, please stand. If you're visiting for the very first time, please stand. I want to recognize you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, 
Brother Johnson has already recognized his guest. Are you visiting with someone who, other than Brother Johnson, would you stand again? If you're visiting with someone and you're not a part of the Johnson clan, please stand. And I wouldn't want to get in a fight with Brother Johnson. He'd get on the phone and, and children start coming out the woodworks. My good God Almighty. Brother, will you stand and tell us who you are and who you who you came with? I'm Teddy Martin. I came with Culverwood. I'm from Austin, Texas. Pastor A.W. Anthony May is my pastor. Amen. So I decided to come down this week, weekend to visit. Amen. Thank you so much for visiting with us. Thank you, Colbert. Thank you. Thank you, Colbert. Is there anyone else who's not with the Johnson family that are visiting with us this is the first time? Thank you so much for visiting, for visiting us with us. Please, please know that we have a gift for you before you leave if you're visiting for the first, first time. On this uh, Wednesday night or Thursday morning, we're, we're doing a uh, trip to Mississippi and Tennessee. And on that trip, our youth will be engaged in a youth explosion in Indianola, Mississippi. Indianola, you know that big town down, down up north. We'll be, in, we'll be in Indianola, Mississippi. We're just going to be in that town. That's where I grew up. That's where I graduated a high school. And we're going to be there for four hours only. We're going to stop. We're going to visit the B.B. King Museum so uh, our children and our parents can get some culture in their lives. We're gonna visit the the B.B. King Museum. I'm not gonna point to the parents and the children that say, who is B.B. King? Because some of y'all be laughing, but but we have parents and children that need this culture experience, right? And so we're gonna visit uh, the catfish capital of the world, Indianola, Mississippi, and we're gonna eat catfish and chicken and fish there. And then uh, we're gonna move to the B.B. King Museum where we'll get a tour for about an hour or so, hour and a half, and then we're going to the local church. Uh, one of the guys who graduated after me with my brother is the pastor there, and we're gonna have a youth explosion. And when we have a youth explosion, young people, young people will be engaging in church worship. And then after that, we're gonna leave and go to Memphis, Tennessee, and some of the activities there will be, they will perform musically, at a at a um, African American church about four times, and then um, then they go into um, they go into. I just love this little girl. Don't you? I just want her to stand here with me. Hallelujah! I just love her. Come on, come on, Loretta. I just I just so in love with these two. I just love to have them close to me, but in between them. So so we're gonna have a youth explosion, and when. When we have a youth explosion, we are we are going to we are going to have our children exposed musically, and they're going to sing, and, and and they are going to join in with other youth in the Mississippi Delta. Then we're going to have a Brazilian service where they will perform and teach other children how to play musical instruments, and we're going to serve at a senior citizens complex where they will be packing bags and giving away gifts to senior citizens in Memphis, Tennessee and South Haven, Mississippi. And then we're gonna take three church services, y'all count them up, they're gonna be three English speaking church services. So this is not a vacation, this is a mission trip. They'll be getting, uh, in the first stop, we leave at 4 a.m. on Thursday morning and we won't stop until 11.30 at night. And I'm gonna tell you, parents don't have to worry about them sleeping. <laughs> That's for sure. And then uh, we will be getting up at six o'clock in the morning and going again till about eight to 10 o'clock at night. It is a mission trip, it's not a vacation. So now I wanna ask everybody who's going on this trip with us to come on up and let's, uh, let this congregation pray with us and pray for us as we go. If you're going on this, this mission trip, come on. Come on up and um, let us have a word of, of prayer together. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we, believe, we believe that our church looks like heaven is going to look. We believe that our church is, is looking. Anybody hear me? I said our church looks like heaven is going to look. 
and when uh, when we get there we got to get used to what God is doing with us and through us uh, the good thing is a parent at least one parent got to go to every child <laughs> I said brother Haynes one parent going with every child amen hallelujah amen. sister Davis and I are going to be the only two in my room <laughs> There ain't nobody else gonna be in that room. They're gonna be with their mama and their daddy, their auntie and their neighbors. Amen. So, Brother Miles, will you come and, and, and pray, pray over us and, and ask God's blessing on us as we leave? Uh, we are taking uh, 38, I think 38 people, and we're gonna be riding a, um, a bus uh, that we have we have rented for the days. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we bless your name today, Lord. Lord, you are a great God. You are a magnificent God, dear Master. We thank you all, first of all, for birthing this idea, Lord, of a mission trip yes. for these young people. So they might go, dear Master, and spread the good news about Jesus Christ in their own way, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Master, for making this trip possible, dear Master. Yes. Making the impossible possible, dear Master. Yes and causing all things to come together for good yes. to those who love you and who are the call according to your purpose. We ask now, dear Master, that you would bless them yes. as they go, yes. that you would keep them safe, dear Master, yes. from all harm and danger. Amen. Bless them on the highway, dear Master. Yes. Bless them as they travel. Yes. Keep distance, dear Master, between them and the other vehicles, dear yes. Master, yes. and lead them safely to their destination. Yes. Lord, we ask that you would bless their leaders, dear Master, we ask you to bless their parents, dear Master, yes. that you would watch over them and keep them. We thank you for them, dear Master. We thank you for their cooperative spirit, dear Master, and not only sending the children, dear Master, but also traveling with them as they go. We ask now, dear Master, that your work would be done on this mission trip, dear Master. We pray that as they go, dear Master, they will learn more about you, that they will see your power firsthand, dear Master. We pray that lives would be blessed, dear Master, that hearts would be changed, dear Master. That somehow, some way, dear Master, seeds would be planted. And even, dear Master, that men, women, boys, and girls would come, in, come running and seeking, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Lord, we pray that they would have a ready answer, dear Master, yes. for the hope that lies within them as others seek to know you and to do your will. Yes. Continue to keep them, dear Master. Watch over them. Grant them success along the way. Yes. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory is in the strong and precious name of Jesus, dear Master, that we ask these things. Amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. Oh, well, Pastor David just asked me to say something. And we're also praying for obedient children. And I told uh, the boys and girls, I'm going to try to be nice. I'm going to be nice and I'm going to use calm voices, my calm voice. And they're going to just be obedient and do everything that they're supposed to do. So thank you all so, so much. Amen. Amen. Many of you have given to our, our goal. Our goal is... Our goal is is forty thousand dollars, and so we have to feed children. And anybody that have children or had any know they can do do away with some food. So so we have to feed them. Another thing that I didn't did not mention is that they will be going to the National Civil Rights Museum also, so they get a great cultural experience. The last time we met, uh, we were at uh, twenty a little over twenty eight thousand dollars. And so I think we're right around. I'm gonna add it up completely tonight. I think we're right around. We're over 30,000. Right here, right now, amen? <laughs> amen. And so if you have more money to give, you need to give so we can eat. <laughs> if you have more money to give, please give so, uh, so we can reach our goal. It's not too late and you, uh, you want to give to Turning Hearts Ministries, let me just say to you, thank you so much, all of you who have contributed, all of you who have been encouraging, 
all of you who have given to children that were not your children. Um, we, we had goals that were set by individuals. One lady's goal was $5,000, and she got her friends on board, and I think she has gone over her $5,000 goal with just her friends and her family members. She's not a member of the church. She does not want to be named. So all these children got to write thank you letters to people they don't even know their names. And so they're going to be writing letters to people who uh, have contributed to us and, and blessed us. And because uh, we had contributors, we were able to reduce the amount of money that each one of them were able to pay uh, and, and make sure that they came up with that amount. Amen. So again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're looking forward to being missionaries for the Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. We have several churches that are that are represented as well. So God has has tremendously has tremendously blessed our church and and our ministry. God has. I said God has blessed blessed our work. Our church. Amen. What we have next, Kevin, we have communion. Let's turn our hearts and our minds toward toward communion. The Bible teaches that Jesus met with his disciples and he said to them before that murderous day, he said to them, I'm gonna leave you. He said to them as he broke the bread and he handed out blood he said to them this is my body and this is my blood he says as often as you do this you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again Jesus blood cleanses us he keeps us it is the blood of Jesus that makes us whole and he says as often as you do it the apostle Paul picks this up in first Corinthians chapter number 11 and he says it like this he says before you take communion examine yourself he says if your heart is not right if you are struggling with sin confess it he says as you confess your sin your heart is made right through Jesus the Christ so we're going to pray right now that that you are given that moment to confess with God, talk to Him. Because Paul goes on to say, some of them did not examine themselves, did not confess their sins, and they ate and partook of the communion, and they fell asleep. This word in the Greek, fell asleep, means they died. Now let me tell you, your unforgiveness is not more important than living for the Lord. Confess it, let them off the hook, and just forgive them and move on. And we're going to share a moment of communion. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus the Christ. We thank you for your mercy and grace. God, we thank you for who he is and what he's done. We thank you as we come to eat that you can make us whole. We come confessing our sins. Lord, we've fallen short. Lord, we've messed up. God, we have sinned before you and before heaven. Lord, I ask you now to forgive us. Make us whole. Bless us, Father God, that you will wipe away all of our sins. Bless us, Father God, that we will not eat and drink unworthily. But Lord, we ask you to bless us that we, Father God, will be made worthy by you, that our lives will be made to better. Lord, we thank you now. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
the Bible says they saw the hymn and they went out. So today what we want you to do, we want everybody to go out this way so we can go past the, the library. We want these on this side to go this way. Sister Davis and Brother Haynes, will you come down, please? We want people on this side to go this way. People on this side to go this way. Everybody's going in this direction, not that direction. And we want to fill the hallways up. We can get some pictures. We we know this is a big day for this family, so we want to we want you to fill the hallways up. We we'll get a few pictures, and then after we get some pictures, they're gonna cut the ribbon. And as they cut the ribbon, we're gonna ask you to walk in, take a view, and and then exchange that your place with somebody else. Again, visitors, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for for coming to be with the 79-year-old. He's about to get grown now. You got one more year, he'll be full grown. And thank you for participating in our service to our other visitors. Thank you for being here. You're so kind. We know that you had a bunch of churches you could have gone to, but you chose to stop by our house on the Saturday road. Thank you so much. So if you would stand now, there's no benediction after communion. Uh, I want those on this side just to fill the hallways going toward, you want to go out this door, take a left, and just stand there till we get there. These go out this door, take a, go straight, just stand there till you get there. Those who've been watching, thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. We're at 4251 Shuramai Road. That is 4251. Shuramai is spelled S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas. 77048. 77048. Thank you again. God bless you. God keep you. It's our prayer.